Dear colleagues, I feel really sorry that I cannot be present at your wonderful conference, but I had commitment during the same time. I have received the task of talking about the multimodality approach to diagnosis and also I would add detection screening of breast cancer. Dear colleagues, there are several reasons why we have to use the multimodality approach not only to diagnosis but also to screening. In screening most of the women are going to have normal mammogram and those can be grouped into five different categories according to our mammographic histologic correlation. Everybody in this room knows that it's very difficult to find a one centimeter stalic lesion in this dense breast and in this dense breast and it's extremely easy to find them when it's adipose tissue in the surrounding. One reason why we need another method in addition to digital mammography. Here is a Example very quickly, this patient has a 25 millimeter note positive breast cancer right in front of you. Could you find out whether it's the right or the left? Well, it is in the right breast. As you see this acute angle pointing out where the stellate lesion is. However, the mammogram is negative. But ultrasound easily can find it. The other reason why we need a multimodality approach is the heterogeneous nature of breast cancer. Breast cancer is not a single disease. It is really extremely heterogeneous. If you only look at a mammogram, once it is a stellate lesion, once it's a circular ill-defined lesion, and then sometimes we find these different types of calcifications. And the third reason why multimodality approach needs to be introduced is to determine the true extent of the disease. It is really heartbreaking to know that this patient actually has a huge area with carcinoma and in six months she was dead from the disease. This is really in a nutshell to summarize why we need multimodality approach and we have been very skillful in developing the different methods to help in diagnosis and differential diagnosis. But unfortunately in screening we only have mammography and that has to be changed. So now we have the microfocus magnification mammography, the spot compression, the combination of the two. We have the ultrasound which everybody really likes and then the different interventional methods, the fine needle aspiration, core biopsy, mammotome, larger bore needle biopsies. But it's very important to talk about the importance of breast MR. And it's very important to talk about the automated breast ultrasound as well. I don't have more time than just elaborating on these two. I'd like to tell you that tomosynthesis is not a solution to the problem we call dense breast. It is the ultrasound examination and preferably an automated ultrasound examination that solves the problem. Dear colleagues, what I would like to discuss with you is that despite the fact we are screening and surgery has developed a lot during the past two decades and then there are the adjuvant chemotherapy and radiation therapy, the unfortunate thing is that patients are still dying from breast cancer. Why? Well, there are three reasons. One, when the unifocal carcinoma is too large, then it can be spread and it can be fatal. The other is called the multifocal breast cancer. And then the third one is diffuse breast cancer. The summary is really this. Large unifocal multifocal and diffuse breast cancers most likely being systemic at the time of diagnosis and treatment and it's very difficult to control this disease. 
If we take the fatality rate of unifocal cancers, it is going to be 2.2 times higher fatality rate in multifocal invasive cancers, with or without in situ. And of course, the worst is three times higher fatality. Unfortunately, the TNM classification does not recognize this word, multifocality, or does not request you to describe the diffuse nature of breast cancer. However, most of the breast cancer deaths are actually in these two groups. How are we going to be able to tell the colleagues, the surgeons and the oncologists, about the extent of the disease if we don't do breast MR? It really is invaluable to describe the true extent of the disease. For example, here you see these bulges, but actually this is the true description of the disease extent in this case. And even if it's multifocal disease, but localized within 4 cm, or in a larger area than 4 cm, there is a significant difference in outcome. We can conclude that multifocal disease is a very independent negative prognostic factor. Let me demonstrate it by showing one single case. 69-year-old asymptomatic woman comes to screening. And of course you are skillful enough to find immediately the non-specific asymmetric density here. There is only adipose tissue on the other side. When you look at the CC projection, then the lesion is here. There is no such density on the other side. And when you magnify, then you see actually two very small stellate lesions. And there are some calcifications as well. Well, you perform the ultrasound, and then the ultrasound examination says that there is one and there is another one tiny stellate lesion, and we know the outcome of these are extremely good even if you follow them for 25 years. We do the core biopsy and we prove that this is an invasive cancer. The calcifications have diffuse pattern, these so-called skipping stone-like calcifications, that is these flat stone-like, deceptively benign-looking calcifications, then you think about a lactiferous duct having these micropapillary cancer proliferation, and these cancer cells produce fluid, and the fluid is going to distend and distort the duct within which these flat stone-like calcifications may occur. Dear colleagues, it's a big difference to treat the patient with one or two tiny cancers close to each other or a patient who actually has a very extensive disease, as in this case. Without MR, we would not have been able to describe and detect the true extent of the disease. After mastectomy is done, you see these distended ducts. When we look at the large section histology, we find a very extensive disease within which here is the tiny invasive carcinoma stellate lesion, but right beside it there are the lactiferous ducts distended by fluid produced by the cancer cells that are micropapillary. And this is very well reflected on the mammogram, these lactiferous ducts full of micropapillary fluid producing cancer. What is the extent of this disease? No, it's not 4 millimeter. That was the size of the larger stellate lesion. The extent of the disease is larger than 10 centimeter. This cancer is originating from the major duct. We call it ductal adenocarcinoma of the breast. This cancer is originating from the small terminal ductal lobular unit that is from the cells of the acini. That's why we call it acinar adenocarcinoma of the breast. So let's talk about the other topic, 
how to handle the dance breast issue. Unfortunately, people believe that dense breast is equal with higher risk of developing a breast cancer. That is certainly not true in the majority of dense breast, which is actually normal fibroglandular tissue, which atrophies and the risk is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The high risk is here. That's about 12 and that's about 8% of the population. The sensitivity of mammography is limited in women with dense breast. And that causes a lot of problem in screening. How frequent it is? Dr. Kolb from New York tells that about two-thirds of the women premenopausal have dense tissue. About 25% of perimenopausal women and those who take hormone replacement therapy, about 50%. We have to do something about it and ultrasound is really a godsend, but the problem with ultrasound when we are screening large asymptomatic population that is operator dependent and there is a poor standardization to the technique. So therefore automated breast ultrasound has been designed and developed. When the woman is lying supine, so not only the gravity but also a curved compression plate is going to flatten this out. And then it's automated because within the compression plate there is a 14 centimeter ultrasound probe that is running. And then in the brain of the computer, two millimeter, two millimeter and two millimeter thick tissue slices are produced and you can lay them out and if it's a normal tissue then it's contiguous. If there is pathology whether it is a fluid accumulation or whether it is a cancer cell proliferation, you are going to get a defect in the tissue. And that is the way we are finding collection of fluid or collection of cancer cells. And we can do it while the mammogram is normal. It really doesn't matter whether there is this very dense fibrous tissue or fibroglandular tissue hiding most of the cancer. Because ultrasound acts like a radar drilling itself through the dense fibroglandular tissue. What a problem we radiologists have with cancers that show up with architectural distortion. We miss them most of the time. And these are fatal cancers. We shouldn't miss them using the automated breast ultrasound, we find them earlier than otherwise mammography would find it. Women with breast implant benefit a lot from automated breast ultrasound. You see the cis three-dimensional picture here. The other colleagues, let me show you one case at the problem as well as the solution in pattern one, pattern four, and pattern five. Pattern 1 is right in front of you, the beautiful mammograms of the 53-year-old asymptomatic woman, very well positioned, nipples are in profile, and it's a dense breast. Pattern 1. And you and me have to find these tiny speculations and ask a question whether there is an iceberg phenomenon here that is the cancer hidden there. And where would that be here? It indeed is there, but quite many radiologists are missing this. So we need help on the CC projection. Indeed, right there, the cancer is, didn't calcify. But if you were using 3D automated ultrasound, it would not only show the radiating structure and a couple of tissue defects, but it really would say it's not only one, it's several. And then you use the ultrasound and it proves that it's multifocal cancer. And unfortunately, we talked about multifocal cancer, poor negative prognostic factor. There is a lymph node metastasis. Breast MR shows, confirms that it really is multifocal disease, at least three of them. So segmentectomy is going to take place after core biopsy 
proven invasive carcinoma and then we magnify the specimen we slice the specimen and correlate with large section histology and indeed here is the cancer we found the problem is that the pathology says there is another one here and there is another one here so actually she has three cancers just like the automated ultrasound showed it and here is the lymph node metastasis the pattern 4 is even worse pattern 4 is the adenosis pattern where there are many cells many more cells than in pattern 1 so higher risk about 12 percent of the population belongs here and they are developing their breasts with pattern 4 and they are dying with pattern 4 this is one of the stubborn dense breasts that never changes she is 46 asymptomatic does not have any abnormality but believe me and then you take the mammograms CC and MLO projection and you would sign this out as normal mammogram however she has a huge carcinoma here which can be detected easily and accurately by using 3D automated ultrasound now this one is going to be a cyst but above it there is a huge carcinoma and it's quite a shocking experience to realize how big cancer do we miss if we only use mammography the equal is we didn't see the cysts we didn't see the huge carcinoma and we prove it's an invasive cancer by doing the 14 gauge core biopsy and then the MR shows that it's indeed a very extensive disease and here is the sad news the pathology says that actually all this hides carcinoma a fairly aggressive very diffuse carcinoma with lymph node metastasis and the mammogram can be considered as normal 8 centimeter carcinoma doesn't make any radiologist happy the echo is the final pattern 5 extremely homogeneously dense convex contour we don't know what's hiding there sometimes it's only atrophy sometimes it's very viable TDL use thousands of them here's a case to demonstrate the problem and the solution to the problem she is 37 years old she herself felt a lump you perform clinical breast examination you perform mammography you perform microfocus magnification mammography still don't see anything however palpation confirms that there is a hard large tumor conglomerate just about in this quadrant you do the 3d automated ultrasound and you immediately find a 12 millimeter carcinoma and a little distance from that you find a 29 millimeter carcinoma it's quite disappointing that the mammogram is negative handheld ultrasound certainly shows one and the other you perform core biopsy on these and you got what you expected but unfortunately also get the positive axillary lymph nodes MR shows it very nicely and as we have seen it also ABUS could see it very well mammography couldn't unfortunately so now what we have to do is prove it microscopically and then she gets the diagnosis of a 29 millimeter carcinoma and a 12 millimeter carcinoma of course with lymph node metastasis I hope that I presented the problem for you in a way that it becomes practical so I'm dreaming about a day 
when we are going to have the screening units and the digital mammogram is taken and when it's taken and it's determined that she does not have dense breast no further imaging is needed on the other hand at the other extreme here's a pattern for not only mammogram but also automated breast ultrasound is needed dear colleagues this tool is available and actually what is most important is that a large-scale clinical trial proved its benefit we have been carrying out multi-center study in the United States on 15,000 women with uh, dense breast and there were practically 29 percent 27 and there was practically 27 percent more invasive breast cancer found in the group that went through automated breast ultrasound examination increased the sensitivity significantly and did not change the callback very much published in radiology dear colleagues I hope that I could lead you through those ideas in a very short period of time that we call multimodality approach. I wish you in the continuation a great conference.